Welcome, curious viewers, to a fascinating dive into the depths of the mysterious and intriguing spiritual realm. In today's video, we will explore an enigma that has persisted through the centuries, a question involving the presence of demons, the divine figure of Jesus, and the surprising choice of pigs as involuntary participants in this supernatural puzzle. Get ready to uncover the obscure reason why demons asked for Jesus' presence among the swine. A narrative filled with mysteries and symbolism that challenges the boundaries between the divine and the malevolent. Stay with us as we unravel together this riddle that transcends sacred pages and resonates in the minds of the curious throughout the ages. In a captivating narrative, the demons, after the initial encounter with Jesus in Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11, persist in challenging and confronting the Son of God. Jesus not only triumphs over temptations but advances, exercising authority over demons in the spiritual realm, Matthew 8 verses 28 to 34, and healing diseases and sins by performing miracles such as curing a paralytic in Matthew 9 verses 1 to 8. In a surprising twist, after miraculously calming a storm, Jesus and his disciples embark on a journey across the Sea of Galilee. However, the focus now shifts exclusively to Jesus upon reaching the region of the Gerasenes. Two men possessed by demons, so violent that no one could pass by them, approach. Tension reaches its climax as the demons, recognizing Jesus as the Son of God, plead to be expelled into a nearby herd of pigs. What unfolds next is a dramatic scene, with the herd rushing down the slope into the lake, resulting in the death of the pigs. The impact of this event is palpable, prompting the pig caretakers to flee hastily and the news to spread throughout the city. The entire community approaches Jesus, asking him to leave the region. Matthew guides us to a profound reflection on the power of Jesus and raises the question, what kind of man is this? In this thrilling journey through the Decapolis, a predominantly Gentile territory, the presence of pigs, animals considered unclean, adds an additional layer of mystery and symbolism to the story. What else awaits Jesus in this challenging territory? The answer is about to unfold, keeping us eager for more revelations about the unparalleled Son of God. According to Jewish precepts, as described in Leviticus 11 verse 7 and Deuteronomy 14 verse 8, the pig is considered unclean. However, curiosity extends beyond dietary prohibitions. The term, Gadarenes, transcends a mere locality, it reaches into the mysterious village of Gadara, located about five miles southeast of the Sea of Galilee, and the surrounding region, possibly encompassing the enigmatic village of Garka, known as Cursa or Cursi, on the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee. The narrative shifts to a fascinating event, the exorcism performed by Jesus in the region of the Gadarenes. Two men possessed by demons emerge from the tombs, a scene described in both Mark 5 verses 1 to 20 and Luke 8 verses 26 to 39. The intrigue deepens as a discrepancy in the accounts is noted, with Mark mentioning two men and Luke referring to only one. As Jesus crosses the sea, the story moves to the region of the Gerasenes, where a man possessed by an unclean spirit encounters Jesus. This man lived among tombs, defying any attempt to subdue him, even with chains and shackles. His intriguing condition is accentuated by the fact that no one could master him, while he spent nights and days screaming and injuring himself with stones. The narrative reaches a climax when, from a distance, the man spots Jesus, runs toward him, and prostrates himself, crying out, What do you want with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God. The revelation of the name, Legion, initiates a surprising dialogue, where the demons plead not to be expelled from the region. The story takes an unexpected turn with Jesus permitting the unclean spirits to enter a herd of pigs. About 2,000 pigs rush uncontrollably down the slope in a conclusion as intriguing as it is mysterious. The narrative, 
replete with supernatural elements, leaves us eager for more revelations about the encounter between Jesus and the possessed in the enigmatic region of the Gadarenes. In the turbulent waters of the sea, the pig keepers witnessed an event that made them hastily flee. They spread the story through the city in the countryside, arousing the curiosity of the people. When everyone arrived to see what had happened, they encountered a man who, once possessed by a legion of demons, was now seated, clothed, and in perfect sanity. An inexplicable fear gripped those who witnessed the transformation. The account spread like wildfire, and people began to ask Jesus to leave the region. When Jesus boarded the boat, the liberated man pleaded to follow him, but Jesus refused, instructing him to return home and share with his family the mercy he had received. The man departed, proclaiming far and wide what Jesus had done for him, leaving everyone amazed. However, the situation was not straightforward, as the reputation of the two violent men who were formerly possessed by demons still haunted the region. The fearful crowd followed Jesus from a distance. The demons, in turn, quickly recognized Jesus' divine status, acknowledging him as the Son of God. Yet, despite this understanding, they remained as demons, knowing Jesus but harboring a demonic hatred for him. The question the demons posed to Jesus resonates, intriguing and mysterious, signaling a confrontation between the divine and the demonic. The recognition of the title, Son of God, by the demons points to a celestial invasion, a dominion that transcends the boundaries of the spiritual realm. How enduring or benevolent Jesus would be depends on the context, as presented in Mark 1 verse 24. The title, Son of God, emerges in a hateful and frightening manner. But there is more to unravel. Demons not only acknowledge Jesus' power but also his essence as the Messiah, the Son of God. The second question raises the possibility of eternal torment for demonic hosts, revealing a dimension beyond power, a dimension that connects Jesus to fulfilling a judicial duty at a predetermined time. By limiting the demon's activity before the appointed time, Jesus signals the approaching kingdom. Demons, aware of a predetermined judgment for Satan's troops, cry out, What do you want with us, Son of God? These words foreshadow not only the kingdom coming but also the invasion and conquest of Satan's domains. Although the final judgment awaits the glorious return of Jesus, the demons implore him with a proposal that, with permission granted, results in the liberation of men from demons. The narrative reaches a crucial point when the demons enter a herd of pigs. The attempt to avoid eternal punishment leads to the irony of fate, the pigs go mad and plunge off a cliff into the Sea of Galilee. Jesus strategically accepts the proposal, serving his goals of liberation and purification, while the demons face the destruction of their impure earthly hosts. In this intricate play of power and destiny, Jesus's response echoes not only as acceptance but as triumph over the forces of darkness. What else awaits in the details of the Son of God's journey? If you are enjoying this content and want to receive more videos like this, subscribe to the channel now and activate the notification bell. Don't forget to leave your like so that YouTube recommends all the videos for you. In an intricate play between good and evil, the fitting emblem becomes a safe haven for the third demons, offering a proposal that would not alter their ultimate destiny. On Judgment Day, something remarkable happened, Jesus accepted the suggestion of the demons, allowing them to play a peculiar role in his divine plan. Curiosity deepens as we explore the nature of this acceptance. Unlike Jesus's encounter with Satan in the desert, where he resisted staunchly, here there is an intriguing twist. By accepting the demon's proposal, Jesus does not fall into sin. A crucial distinction arises, while the demon's request in Matthew 8 did not lead Jesus to sin, Satan's demands were cleverly designed for that purpose. In the desert, 
Jesus refused to succumb to Satan's temptations, rebuking him with scriptures. The refusal to yield becomes a focal point, outlining the subtle line between accepting a proposal and succumbing to disobedience. The desert episode contrasts with the situation of the demons in Matthew 8, offering a fascinating insight into the dynamics between the divine and the demonic. The narrative unfolds with a peculiar request from the demons to enter a herd of pigs. This seemingly simple request reveals a deeper complexity. Jews viewed pigs and demons as undesirable of the same order, making the demon's suggestion even more intriguing. Jesus, warning against casting pearls before swine, weaves a parable resonating with divine wisdom, contrasting with Satan's sinister demands. The intensity of the situation heightens and we realize that the herd of pigs was not wild but valuable property bred for the market. The destruction of these pigs, estimated at about 2,000, leads to a fatal outcome. The demons, known for inflicting harm and agony, reveal their hostile nature, seeking to fuel animosity against Jesus. In this intricate scenario, the fine line between accepting proposals and resisting temptation becomes clearer. The saga of the demons invites us to explore the complexities of the divine and the demonic, revealing surprising facets in the grand plan of redemption. In the intriguing narrative of Matthew 8, we encounter a surprising twist, the Gentiles of the region ask Jesus to leave after witnessing the expulsion of demons. The episode, recorded in verse 34, reveals an unexpected response and sheds light on the perversion of local values. Instead of celebrating the liberation of the demon-possessed individuals, the community prefers the pigs, as pointed out by a commentator over the centuries. The peculiarity of this event resonates in Jesus' decision not to destroy the demons, allowing evil to run its course until the day of complete correction. The outcome of the exorcism is not detailed in Matthew, but Mark and Luke provide additional insight. The former demoniac, now eager to follow Jesus, is instructed to return home and testify to the transformation wrought by God in his life. However, the most striking revelation occurs when Jesus sends the former demoniac back to his homeland, turning him into a fisher of men. This expression gains depth in light of verses 33 and 34, where the loss of the herd exposes the true values of the community. The preference for pigs over people and swine over the Savior highlights the sinful nature of humanity. By casting out demons and confronting distorted values, Jesus reveals the local community's true priorities, economic concerns overshadow spiritual significance. The episode illustrates how, even after witnessing miracles, people often choose earthly values at the expense of their spiritual well-being. This fascinating account leaves us eager to delve deeper into the complexities of human nature and the paths Jesus chooses to confront our priorities. Approaching the city, they asked him to leave. Unfortunately, we are all guilty of the same mistake. We have become accustomed to living with sin and are unwilling to contemplate God's removal from our lives, especially when it implies the loss of perceived pleasures or income. However, clinging to sin is one of the most toxic actions we can undertake. The outcome of this narrative carries profound meaning, once again revealing that Jesus' ministry transcends the boundaries of the Jews. There is a foreshadowing of a mission to the Gentiles, dispelling the notion that opposition to Jesus is exclusively of a Jewish nature. This confirms that, in Matthew, opponents are not chosen based on race but rather according to their response to Jesus. Reflecting on our propensity for sin and reluctance to allow God to remove it, especially when it entails relinquishing pleasures or income, finds deep roots in the Scriptures. The Bible often addresses the conflict between earthly desires and obedience to God. In Matthew 6, verses 19-24, Jesus emphasizes the impossibility of serving two masters, highlighting the incompatibility between serving God and wealth. 
This narrative underscores the idea that loyalty to sin and the pursuit of material gains can distance us from God. The story of the Gadarenes, who chose to maintain an economy based on pigs rather than follow Jesus, illustrates a recurring pattern in the scriptures, where people often choose worldly interests at the expense of what is spiritually right. Paul, in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, exhorts Christians not to conform to the patterns of this world but to be transformed by the renewal of their minds, so they can discern the will of God. This suggests that resistance to sin and spiritual transformation are fundamental to faith, inviting us to explore a deeper and more meaningful path on the journey of divine understanding. I explored a new perspective on Jesus' ministry extending to the Gentiles, revealing a fascinating narrative in the New Testament. Verses 11-18 of Ephesians 2 highlight how Christ broke down the barrier between Jews and Gentiles, creating a new people in Himself. The inclusion of Gentiles in the promise of salvation underscores the universality of God's love and mercy, challenging the notion that opposition to Jesus is rooted in ethnicity or cultural origin. The narrative unfolds further in Matthew, where opposition to Jesus transcends racial and cultural barriers. In the Acts of the Apostles, we witness the gospel spreading beyond Jewish borders, reaching diverse cultures and peoples. The episode of the Gadarenes vividly illustrates how Jesus' message calls all people, regardless of their origin, to repent and turn to God. Peter's vision in the Acts of the Apostles emphasizes that the Gospel is for everyone, not just for the Jews. This reveals that Jesus' message is calling people from all walks of life. Ultimately, the narrative highlights a fundamental principle of Christianity, salvation and God's truth are open to all. The true obstacle lies in human reluctance to abandon sin and follow Christ, challenging followers of Christ to align their lives, priorities, and loyalties with the teachings of the Master. If you like biblical explanations and want to learn more about the Word of God, continue watching the videos recommended below here on the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video, see you soon.